So now that we've got the basic layout worked out for our very simple HTML5 page, and if you'll recognize, in the simple little layout that we just created, what I have is, you know, a little bit of a graphic on the body, all of the two-column layout information, the footer clearing everything the way it's supposed to. Now let's make this work a whole lot better with a HTML5 environment. So if you remember, we were now using these new semantic tags inside of HTML5. Now here's the only problem, is that older browsers will not recognize what those tags actually are. In other words, they don't know what, you know, a nav tag is or a header tag is. More importantly, they do not know to display these HTML5 elements as block level elements. Right now, they'd just be like inline elements and then that wouldn't really work at all. So our layout would be kind of busted in, in a lot of older browsers especially. So what I want you to do is to go to the CSS style sheet that we linked to our progress file and we're gonna add a little bit of information so first thing I'm gonna do is to just put in a little um, HTML5 comment here or it's a CSS comment I should say but I'm gonna ask you to write HTML5 display rule now of course this is just a comment you don't have to write this but we're explaining exactly what we're going to be doing here. So let's see. We need to make those older browsers understand what some of these new semantic tags actually do. Or, in other words, we want them to act the way they're supposed to, which means they should be displayed as block level elements. So I could just put in the ones that I'm working on currently. So, for example, the header, the nav, the footer, the section, stuff like that. But I often find that when you're working on projects like this one, you never know when eventually you may later on add something. We're not using the aside at this particular moment, but I will be using the aside more than likely a lot later when we explore some things with jQuery. So I'd like to actually just add as many of these new semantic tags as possible as selectors and then we will go about giving them a particular property and value. So, there is the address. Put a comma on that. There is the article, which is one that we are using. We'll also use an aside eventually, even though we're not using it right now. Now, Canvas is not something that we're exploring at all in this particular uh, video, although it will be covered in other Killer Sites videos. Nevertheless, might as well get into the habit of writing canvas in here as well. Content is something that we were using. Details is not something we're using, but could be used later. There's fig caption. Fig caption is something that you add as a caption to uh, things like pictures and stuff like that. There's figure. There's also footer. I'm trying to just do this alphabetically if I can. Um, we also have a header. You could also have a H group, like a heading group. These are all new tags that, you know, most old browsers don't understand. We are definitely using nav. We are not using, but we could, uh, if we wanted to, use menu. Don't forget to put in these commas. It's important that you do so when you're defining multiple selectors. So um, the menu was something that we were doing. Um, section is also something that I want to be using. And finally, we're well, not using it right now, but we may eventually be using something like summary. OK, so I've got quite a few selectors here. Then I'm going to just come in here. We're going to add some simple information. And the information will be to say, let's display all of these things as block elements. There you go. And let's close that. So that's what we need to do to make our HTML5 semantic tags, our new elements, display properly. Display them as a block level element. So I'm going to save this. And that's great. We could use this now and it should work for the most part. However, 
there's always one little glitch related to earlier versions of Internet Explorer. Now the current version of Internet Explorer is not really problematic because it accepts all of these HTML5 tags and displays them properly as block level elements. But we need a little bit of code that's going to help us to make this work in a, HT in a HTML5 environment if we are working with older Internet Explorer browsers. So that's something we want to do. So what I'd like you to do is just go to Safari or any browser for that matter and let's just write in a little something called HTML5 shim. Now as you can see here shiv or shim is are these two things the same thing? They absolutely are the same thing. So whether it's the shim or whether it's the shiv, it's all the same thing. Don't worry about it. Just one has an M, one has a V. It's nothing to worry about. So look what it says. HTML5 IE enabling script. And it's part of the code.google.com. So it's part of co uh, code docs from Google. So if we click on that, and you'll see here, HTML5 shim, it's just a little bit of code that has been written and is made available under the MIT or it's a, you know um, common licensing right is there a difference between shim and shiv nothing right so as it says there so here's what I want you to do just copy this information and you can see it's just a, con uh, a, a code a comment sorry rather and it is something that you will introduce I'm gonna go back to my HTML5 code and take a look right under our link but before the closing of the head tag I just want you to copy uh, paste that information in here and you can see that comment right here so let's describe a little bit of what it's saying here it says if less than IE9 I told you that the current version of IE is great but if it's less than IE9 what do we do I want you to load this little bit of JavaScript and this little JavaScript will create all of the elements inside of older Internet Explorer browsers by doing so we can be guaranteed that all of the things that we defined here as block level elements will also work in earlier versions of Internet Explorer so once you've got those two elements in place your HTML5 semantic tags headers and footers and articles and stuff like that are all going to work perfectly not only in the modern browsers but also in older browsers at least they'll be recognized and not just throw your whole design out of whack now the only other thing I'd want to mention to you when it comes to cross-browser compatibility and HTML5 elements is that there is a wonderful little tool that you can use to help you in this regard and um, it's a little bit more complex or complicated than um, the scope of this particular course but I will bring it to your attention as you progress and as you get a little bit more comfortable working in this environment what the HTML5 shim or shiv will do for you as well as what we had done with our display rules can also be achieved by utilizing something called modernizer let's see how it's written modern I Z R modernizer right and if we look at modernizer you'll come to this little website here and you can download modernizer the development or the production you can configure your own build and basically I'm bringing you to this website it's a completely free website nothing crazy about it uh, notice it has some HTML5 uh, excuse me CSS3 in here too and in order to make these CSS3 elements as well as the HTML5 elements that we're going to be dealing with uh, work in your browsers then modernizer is a good use of this however don't be fooled modernizer does not mean that if you implement modernizer into your work that it's going to automatically work on every browser that's not true that's false in fact but what modernizer does is it helps you to work with elements like the CSS3 that we're going to be dealing with as well as the HTML5 shim that I implemented in my work and you know the declaration of putting things as a display uh, rule block 
instead of inline. All of those elements can also be achieved by using modernizer. We didn't need to use it, so that's why I'm not using it. But I will bring it to your attention, especially for those of you who are a little bit more comfortable working with more advanced ideas and features. Modernizer's a really good thing to help you with this regard. So you could take advantage of it, and you can see there's a couple of other articles that are based on it and some tutorials. So I encourage you to go explore this after you've finished this particular video, and you can look at some new things that you can do in CSS3 and HTML5. So build the next generation of HTML3, uh, CSS3 and HTML5, right? That's an open source JavaScript library. So, like I said, we don't actually need Modernizer for the things that I'm going to be doing with this work, but remember that if you wanted to, you could s explore this and implement it into your work as well. However, do be aware that, you know, if something doesn't work in a particular browser, Modernizer won't make it work. Modernizer is just a way of making the browser react properly so that it sort of defaults nicely. In other words, it doesn't break apart on you and your whole design doesn't freak out and sort of crumble in front of your eyes, right? Basically, it's just saying, look, if this doesn't work for this browser, then just ignore that and just display this as you would in older browsers. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring that to your attention before we move on to our next video. So, when we come back, we're going to start implementing some CSS3 to our design.